the magistrates are present to facilitate this occasion. The registrars here. Teresa Mugadza, the country director of the IDLO. The facilitators and the presenters already present. Good morning. I have to say that I did not know that we were scared of coming to Mombasa, but if we were, then I'm so glad that so many of us are here present, because I know the numbers in the High Court, and even though I may not be a first counter, I can already count more than a half the judges, uh, in fact, more than three quarters of the judges of the High Court are physically present. Thank you very much for being here. As I try to remain traditional in terms of the presentation, let me also say that I am not sure of a more opportune occasion for us to bond than this present occasion. I miss those days when we would freely have our annual colloquium without wondering whether, like now I don't know whether I'm supposed to be speaking with my mask on or off. Um, whether what I'm touching is safe for me or not, but the Lord God um, will sort that out for me. Amen. I am delighted to be here this morning and happy to have been invited. You know, um, Principal Judge, you know you could have invited anyone else, but it is me you invited, and so I thank you. Um, I have looked at the theme for this year and it looks to me like the dual theme of this year's conference is performance improvement, navigating the new normal in dispute resolution. Looks to me like two things. This theme is particularly apt in the institution's current circumstances as we navigate the current leadership transition whilst continuing to engage with the unique challenges the judiciary faces during the unprecedented uh, global COVID-19 pandemic. In regard to your performance, and more particularly to its improvement, this transition period allows us to look back and take stock of our achievements and setbacks in implementing the strategic blueprint that is the SJT, a service delivery agenda for the period 2017-2021. This evaluation will contribute to the platform upon which the incoming Chief Justice will chart the course for the institution to further progress on its journey of transformation. In regard to the new normal imposed on us by the ongoing pandemic, it allows us to assess and improve our strategies to mitigate the impacts of the pandemic on the effective and efficient delivery of justice. My colleague judges, allow me, if I may, to reflect further on the performance scorecard that has previously been presented by her leadership, um, our principal judge for the High Court.
As at January 2017, when SJT was rolled out, there were about 58,487 cases older than five years. Between then and December 2020, 70,453 cases have been resolved, leaving the number currently standing at 6,000. 995 cases that are five years and older. This represents a reduction of 88%. If anybody in this room is not clapping, I don't know what you are waiting for. That, by any standards, is a fantastic job indeed. For the period 2018-2019, the case clearance rate target in criminal cases was some 84.6 percent. I'm glad to report that you surpassed this target and achieved a rate of 100 and 12%. In the same period, your case clearance rate target in civil cases was 97.5. Again, you surpassed this target and achieved 157. This high level of productivity is mirrored in your merit productivity rating. Target for the 2018-2019 was 126. Instead, you achieved 170 in merit uh, um, in merit based determinations. If that's not evidence of hard work, I do not know what is. However, the Directorate of Planning and Organizational Performance, uh, DIPOP and Dr. Kimalu, they have here course, case uh, load strategy uh, statistics that their report for half year 2020-2021 covering the period 1st July 2020 to that 1st December 2020 shows a total of 10,646 cases filed against some 7,700 cases resolved during that period. As at June 2020, there were a total of some 89,415 pending cases in the High Court, and this increased to 92,530 pending cases as at December 2020. With a case clearance rate at an average of 72%, across the High Court, despite the best efforts from judges and judicial officers in the High Court, judicial officers in the names of the registrars that do our taxations and stuff like that, case backlog is unfortunately increasing. In the above referenced period, case backlog for matters five years and order are seen a 3.4% increase. Indeed, with a workload per judge of 1064 cases against a current rate of about 180 matters per year per judge, 
it is clear that despite our best efforts, this, unfortunately, will only continue. We just had uh, our PJ on that one. My colleague judges, I am well aware of the challenges uh, that you face in tackling case backlog in our courts. Most debilitating among us these are significant financial and human resource deficits. We must, however, continue to optimize the utility of the limited methods and resources that we have. According to the above cited DPOP report, the leading reason for adjournments during that reporting period was the court is not sitting 25%. And the unfortunate bit about the court not sitting is the fact that our clients do not know that the court is not sitting. And so they don't plan to do other things. Instead, they do log in. And for those of us who are still doing physical hearings, I'll come to that uh, slightly later, they come, but they don't find us because the court is not sitting 25%. That's the data we got from Depop. There are, in my view, therefore, steps that we can take, even in our current circumstances, to improve as an institution. There are steps we can take to improve as an institution. SJ told us, uh, SJT told us. And it is reflected in our strategic plan, in the judiciary strategic plan for the period 2019-2023, that we must continue to improve our individual work methods and concurrently improve our organizational culture. As I am sure you are no doubt aware, the judiciary is implementing the organization review report for the period since 2018 and going forwards. And right now, we are dealing with improving administrative support to judges and magistrates. With the appointment of the new committees, the standing committees that were formed towards the end of the tenure of Emeritus C.J. Maraga, and which we informed you about in January this year, the judiciary leadership structure is also being revamped to improve decision-making processes, strengthen the synergy between court and the administrative structures, improve reporting, bringing up and follow up systems to ensure representative and equitable memberships in those leadership committees. In terms of delivery of judgments and rulings, within a period of 60 days, your initial target was 95.9. You achieved 67.5. The target was 
point nine, you achieved sixty seven point five challenges. Now, PJ, I expect that we are going to be discussing that and getting it resolved in a manner that this particular item alone does not bring us down. My story has been one of praises up to that point. This one item of deliveries cannot be allowed to spoil our otherwise good record. I urge you therefore, even as you endeavor to more efficiently manage your judicial work, to engage and support these efforts of participating in the streamlining of judiciary operations and management, because in my view, it is we who can tell our story, we not some outsider there, we. So let's get seriously involved in the administrative aspects of the judiciary. Otherwise, somebody else will do it for us. They've done it in the past for us. There must be a reason why we now are changing because we saw that that wasn't working. So can we together do the judicial function as well as the administrative aspect. That is why at your interviews, because I think most of you in this room came through to the judiciary through those interviews, the Judicial Service Commission sought to find out what your management capabilities were. As the leadership in all court stations, Judges must be at the forefront of reorient, uh, reorienting the management culture across the judiciary. That's what I'm talking about. From efficiently and judiciously controlling all aspects of case, cases brought before us to effective administration of our courtrooms and registries, more particularly the registries. And I'm talking to each one of us, not just the PJs, each one of us. I would like to know a judge who was not PJ, PJ in terms of the principal judge, PJ in terms of the presiding judge in our courts across the country, another judge who walked to the registry to get things sorted because that's one of our weakest links and was stopped. I would like to know who that judge is. And I would like to know who stopped that judge. And so I'm saying to us today, we will only succeed if we do this thing together. There is no division of labor. In terms of getting it right in the judiciary, both in the judicial function and in that administrative function. That's my submission to us this morning. You play the very central law, role in positively transforming the mindset and the culture in the administration of justice towards equality, efficiency, and quality. Colleague judges, the coronavirus outbreak has transformed our world in profound ways. Thus far, the judiciary has done a great job in mitigating the impacts of coronavirus whilst ensuring to the greatest extent possible minimum disruption of access to justice for the Kenyans that we serve for the Kenyans that pay our salaries. Most notable among us this has been the acceleration in the leveraging of digital technology, te technology in court operations. T 
Teresa, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, ideal Lord. Our registrars and the directorate of ICT, particularly Elizabeth, have gone a long way to enable court systems to function virtually, where that has been possible and appropriate. The Office of the Chief Registrar is currently developing a business continuity and disaster recovery plan to ensure that the institution is better prepared to deal with such severe situations as pandemics and other calamities. Uh, we at the judiciary leadership continue to monitor our response to the COVID-19 pandemic on a day-to-day -day basis, ensuring the function, uh, functioning of the judicial system and access to services. Hence the reason I have been traveling across and coming to your courts without your permission. I actually didn't think that I needed your permission. I still don't think I need your permission. I shall do this for as long as I'm around. I shall come to those courts to ensure that what Nairobi thinks is being done in the courts across the country is being done. And my walking around includes the courts in Nairobi. We continue to remain committed to keeping our people safe by providing access to personal protective equipment such as masks and sanitizers and keeping all our court users safe within our court precincts. I hope, Anne, you are not going to let us down on this one, even within your limited budget through adherence to the Ministry of Health guidelines and protocols. The courts are also doing their part in regard to the wider justice sector COVID-19 strategy by increasing the use of alternatives to pre-trial detention and improvement to support decongestation of detention facilities as well as enhancing avenues for diversion of matters such as through the ADR and AJS. There's continued need, however, for adaptation at operational and leadership levels. All of us in this room are the leaders of the important institution of the judiciary. We need to constantly assess the effect, effectiveness of our interventions and improve them as we go along so as to optimize their effectiveness and maximize their impact. I have no doubt that your deliberations on this issue later in the conference will elucidate further strategies that will enable us to do so and thus not only overcome this unprecedented, unprecedented uh, health crisis, but emerge from it as an even more efficient, agile, and responsive judiciary. At this point, we must ask ourselves the hard questions. And I have one hard question. The schools at all levels in this country have opened. Churches and mosques and other places of divine worship have also opened. Supermarkets never quite closed. 
yet here at the judiciary the great number of us according to information that reaches me and I like what uh, PJ said about the information that reaches me some of it good some of it bad some of it true some of it not true but according to that information that has reached me a lot of us are still closed to what I would call real and proper hearings. Witnesses are not being heard in many of our court stations physically or indeed even virtually. On this one, my friends, something has got to give. For how long shall we remain behind closed doors when everywhere else is open? Those other people don't follow the Ministry of Health guidelines. How many of them have been brought to our courts to be tried because they didn't adhere to those Minister of Health protocols? I don't say this because it is easy. I know the challenges we have with infrastructure. I also know that the CRJ does not enough money does not have enough money to put tents everywhere. But I say it nevertheless, because in the same society schools are open, places of worship are open. And we are part of this society. We attend funerals. We've been attending weddings We've been attending other social events. And you know, leadership is not a publicity contest. It's not a feel-good situation. If, if you want to be a leader and you're still seeking to be popular, um, I think you need to rethink that your wish. And so I ask us to kindly consider that hard question and say to ourselves, what with the limited infrastructure we have in our courts, can we do to get witnesses giving evidence virtually or physically. I am aware myself of the many cases that have been adjourned because we have stopped. I, I, I get all the time. And you know, my, my phone number is a public booth. I get complaints, both as the Judiciary Ombudsman and now our Acting Chief Justice. And even in my capacity as DCJ, I continued to get these things. I know they'll continue to come. I get on my phone all manner of complaints. Oh, we went to this court, we were not told, people were not sitting. We went to this court and we were not heard, we were not allowed. One I got last night was they came to one of our courts and they were not allowed past the gate. So when we are not hearing and taking uh, this evidence, uh, you, you notice I'm saying physically and virtually almost at the same level. What are we doing to demeanor, for instance? What are we doing to case backlog creation? We did not bring COVID-19 
but the people to find solution for COVID-19 uh, uh, is in terms of access to justice, those people are sitting in this room. Because if we are not the pages, we are the judges who supervise the magistracy at our stations. For me, the courts cannot remain close to physical hearings for very much longer. But I'm asking us to give this our very serious thoughts. Where I am wrong, uh, show me that I am wrong. Where you think uh, we have come to the end of innovation, show me that. Show me uh, that in our collective minds, we cannot find a way to improve hearings. This matters that we are continually adjoining. I have another name and it is called Case Backlog Creation and we shall deal with it for the remainder of our lives so that when the new Chief Justice arrives, that will in fact be their entry point. That will be an issue they will have to deal with. And even as we wish to have as our collective vision the expeditious resolution of disputes with total integrity in all its elastic meaning, that has no meaning if we are not putting strategies in place to hear cases in their totality. Thank you, my sister, Principal Judge, for your continued leadership in the High Court and for kindly having invited me to be here today. As I said earlier, you could have invited anyone else. I sincerely hope that uh, our next three days here will be worthy the while I wish I had the time to interact with all of us because uh, some things cannot be said here. Usually we say them out there, but you know um, how, how busy it is to, to be in my present position, uh, running two, actually four offices at one go and running my personal life where I have um, understandably been kept exceedingly busy. Nevertheless, I urge us uh, to engage robustly and constructively with each other because you have an excellent program over these next few days. I have looked at it um, and uh, that's what I've been speaking to these last few minutes. COVID-19 notwithstanding. As I close my many remarks, I want to once again thank most sincerely through Teresa, the IDLO for facilitating this conference. Without you, we surely would not have been in Mombasa today. We thank you also for your continued critical support to us, and I hope you are doing something about our meeting last week between you and I. It is true when we say that we cannot thank you enough but can only pray that the Almighty God will continue uh, to be kind to you as an organization, to you as, your, as the organization's director, and to this institution for endeavoring to, in very difficult circumstances, bring justice uh, to the people of Kenya. With those very many words, eh? It is my pleasure and privilege 
to declare this our conference officially opened. Thank you very much. In her usual character, the acting Chief Justice does not disappoint. Directed, focused. And yes, I call upon you, dear brothers and sisters, to be adaptive, agile, and responsive. Those are the three words I picked from your leadership. Adaptive, agile, which is very, very, very flexible, and responsive. And one of the things you are called upon to respond to during the next three days is how shall we get back to hearing witnesses so that the case backlog does not grow. It is real. We must face it direct. Ladies and gentlemen, we now are called upon to do two things and we need to decide how quickly we will do it. We have caught up on time. We haven't lost too much time. We will go out near, uh, what is it called, Makotano? Back here, there are some stairs. We'll have a photo session. Then we'll have tea. May I suggest we try and do this within 20 minutes? And then get back so to answer Kazi, you'll hear to let her happen. Karibuni Sana, 20 minutes, please. Thank you.